Good morning and welcome to Worship from the Staffordshire Moorlands for Sunday the 23rd of May. Today is Pentecost and we recall the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the disciples. I'd like to thank the children and our circuit children and family workers and of course our singers for helping lead our worship today. God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we worship you and celebrate this day. Holy Spirit, come among us like a wind, like a fire, like a dove. Come gently or come boldly, we are waiting for you. Let us pray. God of energy and purpose, as lava erupts from a volcano, so may your spirit erupt today. As water thunders down a waterfall, so may your spirit thunder today. As wind moves turbines and sailing boats, so may your spirit move us to action. As a downpour refreshes a dry garden, 
So may your spirit refresh us today. As food gives us energy to live. So may your spirit energize our lives today. As electricity gives power for so many things to work. So may your spirit fill us with power to save your people today and always. Amen. God of forgiveness, we will hear of how your spirit worked in the lives of the early Christians to share the good news of Jesus. We know of many faithful Christians, the saints we only know by name and the saints who have influenced our lives. We are sorry when we have not followed their example to tell the good news and respond to your love. Holy Spirit, forgive us for being close to your presence in our lives. God is a loving God who forgives us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peter, I am Rob. And the disciples were with Jesus. We're all together in one place, waiting on God. Suddenly there was a sound like a really strong wind. The house they were in was filled with this wind. And it blew through the disciples. Where were Jesus? Hair. Then it wasn't just wind in the room, but fire darted into the house too. The fire separated into tongues and each tongue of fire came to rest on Peter. I am a rock. And the other disciples. Where were Jesus? All the strong wind and tongues of fire were not a bad accident. But this was the Holy Spirit arriving and filling each disciple. Where were Jesus? And do you know what happened? Peter? I am a rock. And all the disciples? Where were Jesus? Started to speak in foreign languages. Just. Ones that they had never spoken before. Now because of the festival, there were loads of visitors to Jerusalem, Jews from all sorts of foreign places. Perceiver. Each of these foreign visitors Ching. heard a disciple Where would Jesus? speaking in their own foreign language. Dobre. They were amazed. Don't these disciples Where would Jesus? come from Galilee? How come they are speaking the languages of foreigners? Bonjour. Some of them even thought that Peter, I'm a rock, and the disciples, where were Jesus, were drunk. So Peter, I'm a rock, stood up and spoke to the crowd. We're not drunk. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel about how the Holy Spirit will be poured out on his people. Peter, I'm a rock, told them about how the spirit had come with wind and then in tongues of fire Bonjour. on each disciple. Where would Jesus? Peter, I'm a rock, went on to explain who Jesus really was and how the prophets of the Old Testament pointed to Jesus. When the local Jews and the foreign just, just. Jews heard this, they were amazed. What Peter, I'm a rock, said went straight to their hearts. What shall we do, they asked. Repent and be baptised. Peter, I'm a rock, replied. And that day over 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus. So that's the story of how Peter, I'm a rock, and the disciples, where would Jesus, received the Holy Spirit like a strong wind and through tongues of fire 
and how they went on to tell the good news of Jesus to the people from foreign Bonjour. lands. Today we're looking at Pentecost and um, the verse I'm looking at is Acts 2 verse 3. It says, then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appear and settle on the disciples' heads. So we can make tongues or that flames of fire. Get a strip, get a card, enough to go around your head and staple that together. And uh, I've added that and I've stapled it around the back so it fits around my head. So I'm going to get some card. I've got yellow, orange and red. And I'm going to draw on those flames of fire. So I've done that already. I've orange, red and yellow all cut out. So I'm going to get my headband. I'm going to start with red first. Just put the red on there. And then I'm going to put the orange on. And I'm going to staple these together. And to cover up the staples, I'm going to get my yellow flame, some glue, just stick it over the top of the staples. So tons flames of fire come upon the disciples. <clears throat> and that reminds me of Exodus 3, verse 2, where Moses goes to the burning bush. The bush is on fire, but it's not consuming the, uh, the branch. It stays um, upon the branch. And that represented God's presence and symbolises uh, the Holy Spirit resting in that bush. And for me, that reminds me of what, uh, when the flames came down at Pentecost, because that talks about God's presence on his people, which is it for us today.
So, interview with Simon Peter, known as The Rock, at H headquarters of Jerusalem Garrison, 6 p.m., the day of Pentecost. Are you Simon Peter, known as The Rock? Yes, I am. Look, so why The Rock? Are you a wrestler or something? It's a long story. Jesus called me that. Uh, so you're from Galilee? Correct. Occupation? Fisherman. Well, ex-fisherman. Uh, mm. But fisher of men. What do you mean? Fishers of men? Mm. Look, look, don't get smart with me, sunshine. Look, just put fisherman. Yes, okay. You were following that crazy preacher, I understand. The guy from Nazareth. The one day crucified, calling himself king of the Jews. Yes. Because we, so, you're not denying it then. You, you denied him three times, didn't you? Well, yes, that is true. I did deny it. I was frightened and confused. But you don't deny it now? No. Oh, uh, so, so you, you were frightened, confused. Any more things? No. No? You, a rock. <laughs> okay. So where's the body then? Because we've had reports it's been stolen. It hasn't been stolen. He rose from the dead. Oh, rose from the dead. Yes, we've all seen him since he was crucified. He is not dead. So you're saying that he's still alive? That we, us Romans, did basically a bodge job on his crucifixion? No, he was dead. But now he's alive, as much as he ever was, in fact, even more so. He seems to be everywhere. We've seen him, to eat with him, share bread and wine with him. Uh, so, uh, you've had quite a lot of wine by the sounds of it. You see, sir, we had a few complaints about the disturbance in the city this morning. I should explain, you're not under arrest or anything. You're helping with our inquiries. Mm. We just want to check up on what's been going on, sir. You see, we've had some important visitors. Look, there's quite a list from all parts of the Mediterranean. Both Jews, Greeks, converts, Cree and Arabs, sir. Today of all days, this is brilliant timing, isn't it? Is it? Well, annoying, I call it. Anyway, there seems to be a little bit of confusion, sir. Uh, like rushing of mighty wind and flames on people, mm -hmm. even coming out of their heads. And you're speaking to all these foreign languages, so you understand Persian. I don't. Or at least I didn't. That must be the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit? Uh, well... Yeah, we'll come back to that later. Uh, but first of all, do you want to tell me about the wind, the flames and everything else? Well, it all started before our teacher, Jesus, was crucified. He said it would happen, that he would send the Holy Spirit to help us when he was gone. When he's gone? Well, yeah, right. Um, Holy Spirit, uh, more like methylated spirits, sir. Uh, Mm. Mm. So, he's gone now, this Jesus? Yes, sort of. Oh, not dead again, is he? No, not dead. Here, but not here. Uh, now I'm confused. Uh, so, you were drunk? No, no, oh. not at all. I'm just filled with the Holy Spirit. Exactly, sir. No, it was only nine o'clock in the morning that it came, I hadn't touched a drop. Oh, look, you're a sad case. You're off your trolley by breakfast and you can't admit it. That's a classic case of denial. Look, repeat after me, my name, Simon Peter, and I'm an alcoholic. As I was saying this morning, it was as we were told in the scriptures, in the writings of the prophet Joel, 
Have you got a Bible? Yes. It's Joel 2, 28 to 32. Okay. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those, um, in those days. And all the prophecies and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So you're saying these are the last days, the end times. Hmm. Well, they may well be. Strange things are happening. They may, they may well be your last days. The Roman Empire won't last forever. I think the Roman Empire will last a lot longer than you and your friend Jesus. Repent and be baptised, every mm. one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, more of that Holy Spirit stuff. Well, it is there, in the Bible. You don't believe that's nonsense, do you? Yes, we baptise 3,000 people today. 3,000 people? That, excuse me, that's really hard to believe. I know. Well, look, I am interested in this dead, well, not dead, Jesus character for all the things that he's done. You're saying he's come back from the dead and same sort of spirit like a ghost on us? Do you know what it feels like to be truly loved, utterly known, completely understood and still loved? No, not really. Have you got any bread and wine? There's something I need to show you. Okay, uh, well, yeah, come with me then, sir. Well, good morning, and I hope that you are well and keeping safe. So we've been having a few different activities and crafts this morning and we're going to have another one focused on the Holy Spirit. So uh, rather than actually making uh, something out of some craft materials, we're actually going to do some baking. So why don't you follow this video and show us what things you have baked at home and some of your creations. Have a go at home. So what you'll need for this activity is you'll need 110 grams of caster sugar, 110 grams of self-raisin flour, 110 grams of softened butter. You'll need two eggs and then some vanilla extract and some Skittles to finish off with. And then material wise, you'll need a bowl, an electric or normal whisk, and finally, a cupcake holder as well.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, making those things and doing some baking. And I'm sure those uh, different cupcakes you've made are delicious. And the reason we've done that is to think a little bit about Pentecost and the tongues of fire that came down and rested on the heads of the disciples. Those tongues uh, of fire that the Holy Spirit shared as the people were filled with the Holy Spirit and started to do some amazing things. And that Holy Spirit that, is, uh, that was with the disciples is still with us, there to support us, encourage us and help us when we need help, because the Holy Spirit is our helper. So we, when we need help, we can ask him for help and ask him to support us. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of Truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. I really, really hope that you can think of an exciting time in your life. And I really, really hope that you'll have some exciting times to come 
in the future. You're by now familiar with the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples, but are you aware of how exciting an event it was? Jesus told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait for a special helper to come called the Holy Spirit. The trouble was, the disciples didn't know who this Holy Spirit was or how she would come. They were waiting in an upstairs room in Jerusalem when they suddenly heard the sound of wind, which got louder and louder. This was strange enough, but what happened next was even more amazing. Flames of fire seemed to appear and sit on the top of the heads of everyone, but no one was burnt. What they heard and saw in the wind and the fire was truly remarkable. But how they felt was out of this world. It felt as though Jesus was with them, right inside them. And they understood that this was the Holy Spirit, who would now be with them wherever they went. They were so excited that they had to go outside and tell everyone else. They all started speaking at once, but amazingly and strangely in different languages, so that the visitors to Jerusalem could understand what they were saying. How amazing is that? They were so excited and happy, and Peter explained to them that Jesus had risen from the dead, and he demonstrated God's love and power and that everyone could experience God's Holy Spirit for themselves. By the end of the day, around 3,000 people had become followers of Jesus. It was on this day that the disciples started their work that Jesus had given them to do, the mission of telling everyone about Jesus Christ. Yes, it was a momentous day, the beginning of telling the whole world about Jesus. So sometimes we call it the birthday of the church. In the Bible story, the Holy Spirit is described in two ways, as wind and fire. So why do we also use the image of the dove? Well, it goes back to the time of Jesus's baptism. The Bible tells us that when Jesus came out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. I am pleased with you. I'd like us for a few moments to think about the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Some of our hymns describe the Holy Spirit as being as gentle as a dove. Well, I'm not an ornithologist, although I love birds. Maybe a dove is gentle. Recently, I saw a wood pigeon on my fence. Let's imagine that it was a dove and not a pigeon. It was quiet, not making a sound. It looked around, waited, and then gently flew down. And then it returned. It looked around, preened itself, waited and flew away. So yes, I'm happy to, to describe the pigeon or the dove as being gentle. And that seems to me how the Spirit of God sometimes works. Gently. A gentle nudge in the right direction towards God. A gentle nudge to commit ourselves fully to follow Jesus. A gentle nudge to show God's love to someone. When I was working in an office, the member, the husband of one of my members was seriously ill. He was in hospital, but he wanted to spend his last days at home. But there was never a doctor on duty when my colleague Judy went to visit her husband. One afternoon, I drove her to the hospital and in the car, I suggested to her that if there wasn't a doctor around that afternoon, that maybe she should phone the Macmillan nurse. I hadn't planned to say that. 
I firmly believe it was the Holy Spirit nudging me to give her that suggestion. And Judy acted on what I had recommended. She phoned the nurse and the nurse made an arrangement that the following day the nurse would meet with the doctor and Judy and her husband. Then there is the image of the wind. The Holy Spirit comes as wind. It was a violent wind, a forceful wind that came into the room where the disciples were. I wonder if you've ever experienced the impact of a strong wind or a gale, seen trees blown over or tiles blown off the roof or tent blown away. A wind cannot be ignored and has a powerful impact. Sometimes that is how the Holy Spirit works. She comes and turns people's lives round and has an impact that transforms lives. And then there is fire. There's a verse in the Old Testament in the book of Song of Songs that says this. Love is as strong as death, passion as fierce as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a raging flame. Fire is fierce, passionate, violent, all-consuming, life-changing. I'm reminded of the transformative experience of John Wesley on the 24th of May, 1738. Remember that he was already a priest in the Church of England. He knew his Bible. He served God. That evening of the 24th of May, he attended a meeting in Aldersgate in London. He wrote in his journal, in the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ. Christ alone for salvation and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins even mine and saved me from the law of sin and death. Tomorrow is the 24th of May and we celebrate Aldersgate Sunday at our circuit service on Zoom this evening. John Wesley's heart was strangely warm and he was fired with a new passion to share the good news of Jesus. Wesley's experience tells us that whatever our age or commitment to Christ, God may have something new in store for us. The Holy Spirit comes gently as a dove. She may come as a fierce, transforming wind. She may come as a violent fire, as passionate as love. Are you sure that you've been touched by the Holy Spirit? What is God saying to you now? Take a moment to be aware of God's presence, a renewed presence or a new presence. Today we're going to be making a dove prayer craft. So for this craft you'll need a white paper plate, some pens, scissors, tape, some ribbon and yellow paper. So the first thing you're going to do is to get your paper plate and on the back of it divide it into three. So draw two lines so you've got three sections. And when you've drawn that what you're going to need to do is to draw a body of a dove. So it should look a bit like this. So you've got a head, a body and a tail. So I guess you could say it looks a little bit like a snowman. Um, and when you've done that, cut it out. So you cut your wings out, so down the two lines and then cut around the body. 
So you should end up with three pieces like this, a body and then two wings. So when you've done that, um, take your wings onto the back of your doll. So it should look something like that. And then draw on two eyes, a beak and some feet. And then what you're going to need to do is with your yellow paper is to draw some teardrop shape shapes on there. So like this way, so I've cut out about six of those. So when you've done that, what we're going to do next is to write down some prayers on there. So some that I've written down, I've got for the Holy Spirit to enrich our lives with your gifts, to help us to know your power and love today, for the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with your love, and one that I'm going to write down now is for the Holy Spirit to help and guide me this week. So when you've written your prayers onto your teardrop shapes with some ribbon, you want to stick some ribbon onto the back of it so they hang like this. So if I stick some ribbon on, and then when you've got all your ribbon stuck onto your teardrops, you want to stick those teardrops onto the back of your dove on the wings. So it should look something like that and all your prayers hanging down. And finally, what I'm going to do is to just tape a bit of ribbon each side of the wing so that it can hang off. Hopefully it will look something like this. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray and we know that you listen to us. We pray for ourselves, however we feel as we come in prayer.
for those who are struggling at school, for children who are worried about their future. May they know the comfort of the Holy Spirit. For those who feel they are not loved or are in difficult relationships. May they know the love of the Holy Spirit. For those who live with illness of body or mind, for those who do not feel accepted, may they know the blessing of the Holy Spirit. For those who care for others, often at cost to themselves, may they know the gentleness of the Holy Spirit. who live in places of war, terror or fear. May they know the peace of the Holy Spirit. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
May the power of the Holy Spirit challenge you. May the peace of the Holy Spirit comfort you. And may the presence of the Holy Spirit enable you to live in love and to serve in the name of Christ. Amen.